Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, another wow. laser comb today. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, wait, what was it? Epi 85? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a, a, a comb with lasers in it. Oh. And uh, and a uh, picture, if you will. Uh, uh, that's right, a, a comb, if you if you will. Uh, that's uh, oh. it's a comb, and uh, it shoots lasers. Wow! <laughs> oh, lasers <laughs> from the from the bristles. What's a bristle? Oh, oh, oh that's uh, uh, chaos theory. Oh, big, right, that's the bottom of it. Big big <laughs> questions ask asked around here. Yes, big questions, little answers. They say. <laughs> Mr. Jones, to episode 83 of the Laser Comb podcast. Yes, your favorite podcast where two kids comb through classic television with und fine tooth laser. <laughs> I am um, Neil Von Siege, and uh, I am being joined by und Uber. Wait, no, Neil Neil von Cal, and I am joined by <laughs> I've ruined this whole thing. Okay. I'm Neil Cal. I'm joined by Christopher Siege. Booyah. 83 of the Laser Comb podcast. Um, yeah, how's it going, Siege? Yeah. <laughs> I could uh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> yes. Uh the Laser Comb uh, uh podcast. Um it's a uh, a, a show you listen to, you 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 put earbuds in your ear, and uh, wow, and that's and um, um, and and, uh, uh, and, you, well, and you, you market it, and you patent it, and you, uh, you, well, you, there it is. You listen to people <laughs> talk, and they they make jokes, and uh, well, uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, for some reason, we really like <laughs> uh, Jen oh, Bloom. Oh. Um, pod, pod, podcast. Um, yeah, yeah uh, uh, a cast the, of the, the the pod people P- casting uh roles for the uh so called uh pod people. Mm, yes. Um. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> uh? The uh, the the podcast from Wales doing a podcast. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, yes. Anyway, I am Christopher Siege. Uh, uh, this is episode 83 of the Laser Gone Podcast, and this week we are talking about uh, one of Cal's picks. Yes. Yes. Um, so Siege put on those very cool uh, shades, and I reached over and I have, um, uh, I-, I do some live action uh, things on Twitch sometime, and I reached over and grabbed these. I, yep. there's These own... The Nazi scientist I in- shades. immediately become... A Nazi scientist when I wear these, <laughs> which is a very odd juxtaposition against um, the tie dye, <laughs> uh, too much energon shirt I'm See, wearing. Not just any Nazi scientist. You look like a Nazi scientist who is like experimenting with like interdimensional travel. Oh, I look like a Nazi scientist who knows that Hellboy exists. Yeah, <laughs> or was involved in summoning him. <laughs> Right, like an occult, an occult Nazi scientist. This, this there's nothing else. There's nothing else. It, yeah, the front even like opens up. Ah, oh, these are for reading, and these are for scientisting. <laughs> oh, oh, stand back! I am about to engage the portal. I'm about to engage the portal. <laughs> You've seen stranger things, yeah. But have you seen Nazi things? Okay, <laughs> I bet you did not you, see have this not, coming. <laughs> have you not see these things? things? <laughs> see, the, the German jokes write themselves. <laughs> da? Wait, no, da is Russian. Uh, yeah, yeah, ja? za. Uh, it's okay to make fun of Nazis. Yeah, 
I <laughs> but I don't like making fun of Germans. I'm sure we got tons of German listeners. Wait a second. Are they making fun of us? Um, uh, I, I, I have seen the geographic data. No, we don't. No. Um, I try to listen to them, but they laugh at themselves too much. But they are not even funny. So why did they go on? Uh, well, well, there it is. There it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we're not actually covering. Um, I'm sure that there's a TV show or an animated um, Hellboy out there somewhere. Uh, but uh, no, we're covering King of the Hill, episode there. 95, actually. Mr. Surfer, have you ever considered propane as an alternative energy source for that board of yours? With a little retooling, I could get it to work. Tell you what I'm going to do. Being that you're my neighbor and I like you, I'm going to give you the new neighbor discount and a free t-shirt. So what do you say? Take a ride on the Cosmic Tide on an all-new Silver Surfer next as Fox Kids Heads for the Hills continues. Just think, with repeat business like that, I could eventually be supplying propane galaxy-wide. There's some animated movies out there. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, I think I've seen one. Wait, I, I might have seen one years ago. Maybe it was forgettable and I forgot. Maybe. But uh, yeah, 95, uh, which is uh, of King of the Hill, which is my choice. Windows 95. Windows 95. And it's season five, um, episode 10, mm. uh, which is called, I had it here, uh, Hank and the... Um, glass elevator when did it originally air taking the shades off for a moment king of the hill <clears throat> it originally aired on oh this is uh season five episode 11 oh it's hank. episode 11 <clears throat> hank and the great glass elevator which originally great. aired on february 11th 2001 hank and the great glass elevator all right wow, just february 16. 11 2001 that is uh <clears throat> Newly 16 at the time. Oh, yeah. And, uh, wow, well, the show went on a long time. Uh, but, yeah. Um, uh, there's not a Nazi scientist in this uh, episode. I just put those shades no. on and uh, ran with it. Yeah. Um, this episode. Uh, so We bring the comedy here. What at, is King uh, of the... <laughs> At Laser Comb Productions. What is King of the Hill? Okay, so King of the Hill is a show that I think is funnier the older I get. When I was a kid, I found the humor very dry. I didn't understand it. Um, and again, there are hit or miss episodes as an adult. It's not like it's perfect, but it, it did go on for 13. Yeah, 13 seasons uh, for, for a reason. A lot of people uh, liked it. And when I was a kid, it was a show that I kind of like watched if it was just on. Right. What about what about you? Uh, never watched it. Remember oh, seeing shit. commercials for it, but um, yeah, King of the Hill was uh, created by Mike Judge, who other beyond King of the Hill, I'm actually quite a big fan of. He wrote and directed yeah. the movies uh, Office Space and Idiocracy, which I really really like. Uh, he wrote and directed, or he uh, created uh, Silicon Valley, which is a show that we covered here on the Laser Gome podcast that mm -hmm. I am also a huge fan of. Uh, but for whatever reason, I just never got into King of the Hill. Just <clears throat> had other things to watch. Um, the humor is very deadpan and dry. Yeah, which normally I'm a fan of, but... It could just be, too. Like, you kind of got, like, rednecky family right can't really like can't really like vibe at the the expense of the jokes in the show and well, I, I get that <laughs> well i don't know that that's necessarily true because one of the reasons why i latched on to uh trailer park boys which is another show that we should probably that's cover fair on here i'm surprised uh, we haven't yeah. we haven't at all uh, <coughs> trailer park boys also uh letter kenny has ended now we can cover it on the show we can cover it on this podcast. <laughs> it oh, just shit, ended, it's ended. With its, 
yeah, it just ended with its 11th season. But um, anyway, uh, Trailer Park Boys, uh, one of the reasons why I latched on to it was because I actually, like, really vibed with a lot of the, like, low-class, like, antics that the dudes got up to. I'm like, yeah. That's I, I yeah, either was doing fair. that or I knew people who were doing shit like that. Yeah, that's that's fair. Same. Same fam. Same. Um, right. Yeah, we need to do Trailer Park Boys. God damn. There's a lot of Trailer Park Boys, too. There is. Wasn't it uh, picked up? It was picked uh, up a couple by times Netflix. by Netflix. Yeah. Like Let's... that show's been going on forever, too. Trailer. There's a Park bunch of movies. Boys. Um, let's see if it's. Is a Napoleon still Dynamite cartoon? Going. Oh, no. Okay. Trailer Park Boys has officially ended now. Officially, both runs sure. of it have okay. ended. Yeah, it ran from 2001 to 2008, and then Netflix picked it up, and it ran from 2014 to 2018. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Let's do Trailer Park Boys next time on the next All right. episode. We'll do that. We usually Letter... decide at the end, but uh, yeah. we we'll do that yeah. and then Letter Kenny. <laughs> there we go. Trailer Park Boys, Letter Kenny. Perfect. Way to round out the it's redneck month here, <laughs> folks. I kind of like clump in like trailer park, man. I I grew up in a small trailer park uh in the mainland too. And so I wonder. Like I have friends that didn't, like middle class friends that really like like trailer park boys too. Um right. but I grew up and uh King of the Hill is um something that i feel like a lot of my friends liked a lot more than me <clears throat> but as i got older i was a big uh fan of it uh particularly the it did something a little different it broke the formula not by much it broke the formula of the main father figure in these cartoon sitcoms being the stupidest character and right. instead all of Hank's friends are way worse than him, but in like different ways. And in this episode, uh, it is his friend, Bill Dribbles, um, or no, Bill Dotrieve, um, uh birthday. One thing I will say is that I really liked the, the gag that Hank takes his his job as like the assistant manager laughed. like so seriously nope. okay so won't it, leave 10 minutes early it opens with a it opens <laughs> with a gag and they come to pick up um hank from work and um they're like oh you agreed to uh, be my date if i didn't have a date for my birthday and hank's immediately like no i didn't i agreed to go to atlanta city with you if you for your birthday. I didn't say I was going to go on any dates. He just takes everything like very literally. Yeah. And indeed, <laughs> it was like, come on, get in. And he's like, what, what, what kind of hooligan do you take me for? <laughs> I get off at 5 p.m. Not, not at 4.50. Not at 4.50. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we see like a very like quick like time lapse of him like sitting at his desk at four fifty, doing nothing, at, doing nothing, and then at five o'clock he's like, "Okay, it's like, time to clock out." And at five oh one, he like looks at the clock and he just gets up and then like leaves. Yeah, no phone call. He's not doing any work. He's just like sitting there, and they're they're all like waiting for him. So that would have went over my head as a kid i found that absolutely fucking hysterical because i've known people like that <laughs> in my no one else is life. there too yeah um <laughs> and um <laughs> we uh we <laughs> i i love that shit and we cut to i totally know people like that too yeah <laughs> people that would be all like um if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. I was like, okay, buddy. Um, we cut to his uh, family. Well, I guess, and if uh, you're uh, if you're leaving early, then well, well, then you uh, you you might as well be one of them queers. I guess because <laughs> yeah. Do I look like a liberal? 
Do I look like a liberal? I am being paid until five, and I'm going to stay until five. Meanwhile, his boss probably wouldn't give a fucking shit. Yeah. Wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> um, we cut to his family. Uh, Luan, that's his His, his boss has probably already left early. Oh, indeed. He's the only one there, so yeah. his boss isn't there. Um, and his family, um, they're having a pool party and, and such. And or they're at a neighbor's or something like that. And um, his uh, wife, Peggy, and his son, Bobby, Bobby, um, they are eating burgers. And Peggy's like, oh, my God, this is the most delicious burger uh, I've ever had. Yeah. And Bobby's like, now, mom, <laughs> I don't know if it's the best burger I've ever had. Um, and then she shoves it in his mouth and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh they find out uh that Luann's cooking on uh charcoal. Yeah. And Hank Hill is assistant manager of Strickland Propane. And as everybody knows, the if they only know one thing, uh, two things about Hank Hill, it's that he sells propane and propane accessories. So um you ever had a burger that's been cooked on a, a, a charcoal grill before? I maybe. I I don't know. It's better. It's way better. I, I presume. I, I can there's presume. so much more flavor in a charcoal. Well, there we grill. go. We have proof. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's so much more flavor in a. Is uh, there anything better than a clean burning propane? Uh, <laughs> Uh, so they go to whatever like party hotel that they're like going to, um, and um, <clears throat> Dale uh, immediately starts making a big stink. Now, folks, I worked at a fancy hotel, and I could immediately tell this motherfucker was trying <laughs> to like make a like exaggerate and make it seem. What, what did he say? He said something like, "Oh, you've offended my religion." And blah 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 and so they get a free upgrade right and uh hank is like i'm hank not sharing a room. having his own room still he's like i i'll have my own room and i'll have the room that i paid for so he has his own room he but the others are in like a, a deluxe like room and they're like making like pillow forts or furniture forts or something <laughs> i i don't know uh, meanwhile, uh, Peggy and Bobby decide to go to Megalomart, which is the giant soulless. It's the superstore of Arlen, uh, Texas. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, there's not an Arlen, Texas in real life, but there's an Arlington, I think. Arlington? Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a town in Texas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like, I guess this is like they're not Costco, but like they're. <laughs> Almost like a Canadian Tire Megalo Mart, or no? I guess it could be like a a Costco or like a Walmart, or I'm I'm not quite sure. American Giant. listeners, tell us what this store is comparable to. Tell tell us to what it's comparable to, like tell gigantic us, warehouse that puts all the mom and pop shops out of business. Yeah, tell us tell us stupid Canadians what uh, what this uh, this retail yeah. chain is like. <laughs> it's supposed to be yeah, and. Um, because we say the real Canadian superstore. I cringe every time I say the full <laughs> name of that, which yeah, is a real right. place. And that's like a giant, like a giant mart here. I actually went to a real Canadian superstore for the first time in a very long time a couple days ago. Was it real? It was real. The The name real Canadian superstore implies that there's a fake Canadian superstore out there somewhere. And I've yet to find it. Anyway, sorry. Go, go no, no, there, 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 there was a re- nothing oh. really to that. Beyond you just that. went to one. I just went to one. It was uh, at the behest of my uh, of a, uh, a new lady friend in my life who wanted me did to you, go shop. Who wanted me to go shopping with her? Did you find President President's Choice uh, twelve pack for twelve ninety nine? <laughs> Everywhere. President's Choice, everything. Actually, I did buy something when I was there, though. I found a Batmobile Hot Wheels. That's kind of cool. 
which I'm not a, I'm not a big, uh, like, I'm not a Hot Wheels collector or anything, but, like, any time I randomly encounter a Hot Wheels Batmobile, I'm like, I'm going to buy that. It's only two bucks. Oh, yeah. I'll lose it and buy another one in a few years, but. <laughs> I have, like, six of them now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Are they the same one? No. No, no. Oh, they're I different ones. Buy, always buy different ones. Oh, okay. I have the, the Tim Burton Batmobile. I have. The Batman Arkham Asylum Batmobile. I have the 60s. Oh, that's cool. I have the 60s Batman okay. TV show. So you Batmobile. got like a little specifically when it comes to Hot Wheels, you just buy the the Batmobiles. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, when I was a kid, I had like over 100. Like not excessive, but like a lot more than, than a random normal kid. I loved Hot Wheels. I, I liked Micro Machines too. Mm. Did you ever have uh, some of the ones that like change color and water? I did. Yeah. Everyone had one of those. Yeah. At uh, least one. Interesting uh, factoid that I have absolutely never uh, shared on anything, any uh, podcast that we've ever recorded. But uh, when I was about a year and a half old, year and a half or two years old, I had a grand mal seizure and was in a coma for several days. And oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I suffered brain damage as a result, and I actually didn't talk at all for about two years afterward. But the first time I started speaking again was because I had taken a bunch of my Hot Wheels cars and I had spelled my name out with them on the living room floor. This is very autistic brain shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had spelled my name out with Hot Wheels cars and I was counting out loud how many cars it took to spell my name. Your full name, Christopher? Yeah. How old were you? Like four. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there was kind of a lapse to talking uh, and you, you started talking a little bit later, but what the first thing they remember is you counting yeah. The number of this, cars it took? This was apparently the first time I had ever said anything out loud since my seizure and coma. Oh, shit. And so, yeah, yeah. I had spelled my name out on, like, the living room floor with Hot Wheels cars, and I was counting how many cars it took. I'm glad that you pointed out that's very art autistically coded so that I didn't have to make a joke about it. <laughs> <laughs> huh, no, yeah, no, I, and I had no idea, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. My, my, my autism brain is very much something that I kind of just own at this point, which honestly was something that I had never even considered before until you pointed it out to me. I... <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, okay. And so I started reading up about it. I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. And not in an insulting way. No, no, not at I all. I wasn't like, what are you? A fucking... <laughs> What are you? <laughs> what am I? A fucking magician, man? A fucking magician, man? I, that's just our code word now. <laughs> uh, but no, I can't remember how it like had come up. But yeah, I like mentioned it or like whatever. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that you like kind of went off and like read about it or watched something about it. And um, oh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where when I was younger, I like took an online little quiz. And I was like, huh, got higher than I expected. Oh, well. And then like never thought about it again until yeah. like my 30s. Yeah. Never thought about like neurodivergence or any of that. I was like, well, explains a lot, but here we are. Uh, I was telling a couple of coworkers about this like maybe a month or so ago. And um, their, their initial reaction was like, yeah, that tracks. And we I'm know. Like, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so it's been like blatantly obvious to everyone in my life, <laughs> except me, until it was like actively pointed out. <laughs> Why did anyone tell me? <laughs> um, it's because I'm a fucking magician, man. <laughs> I'm a fucking magician, man. Um, I don't even know how we. I don't. The fuck were we covering? That. Whatever. It's it's lost in the laser comb. <laughs> inside jokes forever um but uh but yes anyway uh coma big seizure as a toddler coma 
silent for a couple of years. First time talking was me counting Hot Wheels. Thank and so thanks. Thank you, Superstore, the real Canadian Superstore for <laughs> uh, <laughs> helping Christopher get back on the or, or was it no specifically micro machines or Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels. Thank you, Hot Wheels, for getting another fun back. fact is my first job actually was at Superstore as a janitor there. When I, I know was like so many 17. people whose first jobs. You're like the f- fifth person I know whose like first jobs were at the real Canadian Superstore. Yeah, back and this was the early 2000s and back then they had like their price checkers and like their their courtesy clerks basically uh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. wore um rollerblades and they would rollerblade around the store <laughs> i don't know if <clears throat> holy shit <clears throat> excuse me folks i don't know if um there's an american equivalent but like it was wild i don't know if they still do this that but... is the most fucking 2002 thing that <laughs> imaginable <laughs> So it's like courtesy clerks at a at a grocery store whose job it is to like do price checks and things like that. They would fucking rollerblade through the store. Which totally probably doesn't wouldn't track now. No, no way. Not at all. Right? I'm um, sure it stopped. It was just a normal people, thing. So many customers were getting injured by like Dude's dipshit. just fucking ripping it. Like <laughs> dipshit teenagers on rollerblades. Going like 40k in. down the the and the aisles are like half a kilometer long, right? Like this place, <laughs> these places are huge. Yeah, they're huge. like Costco sized. Yeah. Yeah. And so when there are price checkers, it's like, well, do you want to get there in like 30 seconds or do you want to get there in three minutes? Like it's fucking huge, right? So yeah, the price checkers had had rollerblades. What a Oh, I completely forgot about Batman. And then as soon as you mentioned it, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. See, the, the more picture, elegant, if you will, the <laughs> Christopher, more 17. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> is uh, people who do those kind of jobs, instead of putting them on rollerblades and getting them to like zip around the store, give them radios so they can just radio the uh, the information to the cashier. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense, huh? Yeah. And then you just go blah, 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 like price check, blah, blah, blah. And then whoever's closest yep. goes and does that. Or they call someone specifically whose section that is. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And indeed. It does make more sense. <laughs> and indeed, that is how it is done nowadays. <laughs> that is such an early 2000s thing. Picture, if you will, folks, Christopher. Christopher Siege, 17, just fucking hauling ass. <laughs> yeah, a big megalo mart. Hey, those those prices aren't gonna check themselves. Oh. <laughs> wow. And that's it. That, well, that's, that's what the this episode's about now. <laughs> um uh, we can we can cover the there's a few there's a few bases uh throughout the episode. Um <laughs> what were we? To, there's to get a back really, into it. There, there's a really like. I, there are I, good jokes in this. There's a really sweet romance between uh, Hank's buddy who, um, whose birthday it is, Bill, and the, the governor of former, Texas, former or governor former. of Texas. Yeah. Um, so... I actually found their romance like quite sweet and cute. I I didn't know the show had. Had that in it. Yeah. Okay, so it's not what I was expecting, honestly. So there's some there's some B plots going on in here. And and um Peggy and Bobby uh end up buying a uh charcoal grill and eating burgers almost like like out in an abandoned um drive-in theater. Almost like like homeless people like huddled around like a, a bin fire or something, and they're crouching like being sneaky enjoying right. these like burgers um presumably they're going to return it before like hank comes back but uh what ends up happening is the um the side plot is um uh hank's friends uh guilt trip hank into mooning uh all the uh 
the different people at the different levels of this really tall hotel because the elevator's glass and it goes in the middle facing inwards uh, yeah, because they... he had bail he, he's always the curmudgeon he's the party pooper and he bailed on them in high school when they all mooned someone uh but they trick him and hank's the only one who does it yeah yeah they 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 make it sound like it's gonna be a thing where like they they all moon everyone but then when hank goes and does it like none of the others do so he ends up like inadvertently like mooning the former governor of texas and uh well when you know security uh finds out who it is and, and well, goes and knocks on their door i think her name was uh ann richards governor yeah. richards yeah let's say that governor richards yeah yeah um bill takes the fall for it and he's like no it was me and it's like okay uh come with us and he's like oh bill don't don't be stupid and he's like i'll take the fall hank I ha- I don't have as far to fall. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's like the pathetic, like he he's been divorced I'm, like 10 years ago. And I'm more of a loser than you are. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, oh man, I immediately feel Pe- for him. People expect this of me, damn it. And he goes, right? And he goes and he meets him, but he's ex um army. So he goes and kind of like salutes and he's like, uh, Governor Richards, like, ma'am, I'm uh, like Lieutenant Dotrieve, like reporting or like whatever. Um, and um, Lieutenant Dan, Lieutenant Dan, <laughs> ice cream, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Question. Not okay. okay to mock people with mental illness. Is it okay to do... Um, A Forrest Gump impression. Because it's a character in a movie. Well, my mama always said that that life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. See, I feel like Tom You have legs, Lieutenant Dan. (laughs) See, I feel like nowadays, like, Tom Hanks playing a dude who is, like, for all... For lack of a better word, Rotundo. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Um, He's a magician, yeah. We, we He's got a magician. It. Um, I feel like that would not go over well anymore. No. <laughs> and again, award winning across the board. Yeah. Like, th- and that movie is fucking great. It's like, hype. It's hype as shit. Forrest Gump's a great movie. But it was it was different times, and um don't think uh 1994. Think, uh, the world was different in 1994 <laughs> than it was in 2024. Truly, truly, folks. 30, 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but uh, where the heck were we? Um, oh, yeah. They hit it off and they're cute. It's cute. They're like kind of dating. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, when they go back home, Hank uh, goes outside to cook his steaks and uh, he cooks his family steaks and uh, mashed potatoes and stuff and uh peggy and bobby look a little uh disappointed they're like playing with their food they kind of look sad because for the first time in their lives they've experienced the joy of charcoal uh meat charcoal cooking but this is how i always cook our steaks and um peggy's like yeah or bobby's like yeah i know <laughs> And I'm like, holy fuck, dude, that's brutal. And uh, anyways, so- I actually I, I can't emphasize this enough. Like, honestly, though, like uh, like charcoal barbecued I, meat, I believe is it. significantly better after seeing after seeing um, their reaction and uh, your testimony. I, I believe it. Um, so all four, the, the gang like to hang out in front, uh, like out on the street. Um, and they just drink beer and they shoot the shit and they say, yep. Uh, and who well, is the limo blonde guy? Uh, the one he doesn't with... say a goddamn word in this episode. He's Boomhauer. And, uh, he don't, don't, don't talk like this and, you know, real, real fast talker. And then nobody understand him except Hank. Uh, only his friends understand Boomhauer. And, uh, he either doesn't talk or he talks extreme a lot and he talks extremely fast. And he talks like that. 
and I'll go on, go on, and then wow, 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 and then snake, and tell you what. <laughs> I tried to cross Boomhauer with uh, with Jeff Goldblum. It didn't work. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Tell, tell you what. Yeah, so. <laughs> Hotel, oh. uh, the governor, and Richards. <laughs> oh, ah, four uh, of us all standing here in uh, their uh, fence behind us. Oh, uh, drinking a cheap Texan beer. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, we cut back to uh, to Bill, and he's on a date because. Uh, much to the be absolute fucking bewilderment of Hank Boomhauer and um and Dale, uh Bill's getting picked up in a limo by Governor yeah. Richards. And they're just like, what the fuck? Um and there's that one point, I can't remember when, um, but somebody says, uh what was it somebody said well uh because he's like oh i have a date with the governor tonight i better go shower and they're like well at least uh at least she's getting him to shower so uh oh, there, there's that no oh, a man who uh otherwise when uh uh, he's about to go on a uh what do you call it a a, a date with a uh a, a, attractive older woman you see who otherwise had not you know uh uh bathed uh stepped stepped into a a, a bathtub with a you know water water shooting <laughs> down from the the, the faucet like <laughs> like oh, wow, I'm like, wet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh who who can say you know irish spring <laughs> uh, <laughs> Head, head and shoulder, head and shoulder, and head or shoulder. Uh, and or shoulders. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so they go to some fancy ball, and um, hey, I think she she acts actually likes him for who he is. Uh, and indeed, later on, she says, "I know I was disappointed that he <sighs> fucked this up." Okay, so let's talk. They're at a fancy, like a whole bunch of politicians rich people they're at a fancy dinner speaking like charity event or something right um and she's not embarrassed by him he's wearing his like like uniform he's not in the army he's been like discharged like years and years ago um well wouldn't you fucking know it his his ex is there lorraine i think yeah um and right before he he meets her lenora Lenora, Le- Lenore, Lenore, Lenore. I think there it's we Lenore. go. <laughs> it's Lenore. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't you know it? He's like, um, well, that's the thing. Uh, I've always been when they're on a date and he's got it. They're near like a a fountain or something like that. He's like, I've uh, always been attracted to uh, to trash, and uh, you're like a like a a cut of like prime rib or like like a like a better cut or whatever. Right. And she's like, oh, are you talking about uh, food or are you talking about me? And he's like, mostly you. Uh, And she finds that endearing. And I'm like, man, fucking hold on to this chick. And indeed, his friends are like, for the love of God, because they end up going to a baseball game and they get a booth. Like for free. She's just like, hey, does everyone want to go to a game? And they're like, don't fuck this up, Bill. Um, I feel like his friends could have looked out for him more. Yeah, it's but a, anyways, uh, it's a Texas Rangers game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, wouldn't you know it at this fancy gala thing that they're Lenore is there. And um, it's like every time she sees him succeeding, she comes back into his life. Like she's attracted to him when he actually has his shit together just mm-hmm. to like ruin his life like a little bit more. And uh, indeed, there's this trashy blonde like chick. And uh, he faints. And he has to wake up and awkwardly be like, oh, Governor Richards. Weird that he calls the person he's dating Governor Richards, but I, I thought it was funny. Um, yeah. Um, Lenore, Lenore, Governor Richards. 
and so she's immediately doesn't like Lenore. As I immediately fucking do not like Lenore. I this... gotta be honest, I was annoyed watching this at this point because me, I'm like, me you too. Have, you have like a good thing going with a like smart. You have to smart, pretend to be smart. A smart lady who like is treating you well, is doing like really nice things for you. And as a bonus, it it's not required, but as a bonus, probably has money and has connections. Yeah. As as a treat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and is respectable. And the, yeah, oh, this really man. like sweet and smart and like intelligent woman is actually like, likes him. Actually likes you and is like good for you in every conceivable way. And then immediately, as soon as your ex-wife, your like whore of an ex-wife shows up. And indeed, like watch the show. Like this is accurate, <laughs> accurate description. Shows up, you're immediately like just ready to like throw that aside because like oh i could stick my dick in that again and i'm like and indeed she plays is wrong with you man and that's why i wish his friends again he fucked it it up himself he's he's an adult right yeah i wish his friends like stepped in and were like get the fuck out of here get out of here he's an adult but like he's acting like a stupid ass teenager in this episode right and and indeed he ends up sneaking away when he snapped at her because he's like oh i'm gonna go and get to the concession stand and get a hot dog and she's like oh i'll come with you and he's like can a man get a dog alone and i'm like how fucking dare you yeah that was weird don't and what does he do he doesn't go off to meet lenore he goes off to like Call her Call on a her payphone. On a payphone? <laughs> what are you wearing? Uh huh. Oh, oh, that's a lot of clothes. That, that's like, a lot of clothes. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. He's so stupid. Everyone on the sh- oh man, even the smart people on the show are stupid in some ways. But um, he's like, oh, oh. Anyways, uh, yeah. So I'll cut your hair up because he's like a, a barber. He was a barber in the army, by the way. He never actually saw like active duty. I don't know if you <laughs> caught caught that. No, yeah. I I didn't pick up on that. But yeah, he was just hilarious. The, the army barber. Yeah. Um. And uh, she's like, that man he served wanted- our country. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um. And well, he certainly plays it up. Uh, and I think it was only like a few years too. Like it, it's not like he's spent his whole life in the army. It's no, ironic no, no. too because he's he spent bald. a long time. I think he's bald. It, Look at his hairline. I I think there's some humor <laughs> involved in there. The best barber I ever had. Um, and Cody, I know you're listening to this. Um, is a huge jacked bro, like just fucking a hundred pounds of like muscle on top of like his frame. Um, super like fucking tight shirt, super hardcore dude. Um, it's really great. Is really intimidating to talk to, right? But god damn it, he was so fucking good. And he would wear a baseball cap because his his hair was like going. So I appearances can be deceiving. Um, I stopped going to him though because I didn't want him to make fun of me. And guilt trip me into cutting my long, long hair on the top. <laughs> I I was afraid. I was like, I, I can't, I can't go see him. Also, I just we just shave it, shave the sides myself. So Bill might be actually very, very good at his his craft. We'll never know because I I don't think he actually cuts a lot of hair, which is weird because Luann is going to school for hairdressing. But she has a natural talent for mechanics. The show doesn't go anywhere with that twist. I wish it did. Mm. Just kind of treats her like the the dumb, stupid, like kind of like a bimbo. But it started off with her as an arc on the TV show of being like a wizard uh, with cars. And all the people like Hank and his buddies will like stand in front of the truck and they'll be like, I think it's the thermostat. And then they'll he'll sip a beer, and then Dale will be like, 
no, it's the solenoid. And then like Lenore will be like, oh no, it's just like this. And like reach in and like fix something for them. We'll be like, oh, Hank, I fixed the blah, blah, blah. And like, they're all just like, oh, well, next time ask me. So she actually knows more, but the, the show squandered that. It never like put her in like, I haven't watched the whole thing. So maybe it fixed it at the end. But for a lot of King of the Hill, it kind of just turned her into a dumb bimbo. Mm. But anyways, what's the, the there's two plots going on. Um, fucking Bill ruins his relationship because he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I've never done the uh, juggling two girlfriends thing. And he's like, uh, Governor Richards is like, Bill, you could have told me that you wanted to go and like call Lenore. And he's all like, oh, well, uh, I don't suppose we're still together, huh? And she's like, oh, God, no. <laughs> but she's nice like about it she just doesn't have time to fuck around and find out like she's yeah. like what 50 60 I, 60 right? something yeah yeah and she's just like no uh t- take care bill and um she tried to like sabotage their relationship before that because she like has the key to their his house and like lets herself in and <sighs> something like that but anyway back uh at their place they have all the neighbors and everything and um hank back to the propane versus charcoal uh storyline uh they're like oh who's this party for and they're like oh it's for bill but hank has a ulterior motive and he's like no i i don't want to be controlling my wife and so why don't you tell tell me what? Here, I've cooked some burgers on charcoal and some on propane. So what'll it be? Uh, prop- uh, will you choose a charcoal? Uh, which do you love more, charcoal or me? And I actually fucking laughed at that so much. But I'm also like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you- yeah. Charcoal and then she me. like completely indulges him and... And like she takes a bite of each, and then of thro- each. and then throws away the like charcoal burgers, and was all like, of them. She oh, goes and picks them all up. Yeah. Oh, it's no contest. The propane is better, and I'm like, don't encourage him. <laughs> don't. Right. And if your marriage is based on him loving propane, maybe, maybe one very. St- Stupid thing to be hung up upon. <laughs> He's a fun. What a baby. His his identity is being uh, like grilling with propane and selling propane. Okay, so I work for a uh, grocery store. That would be like me being angry about my partner shopping at fucking Save On Foods. You'd be like, "Wow, you you shop at Save On Foods, and I I work at a different." Uh, I work at Thrifty Foods. I work at Thrifty Foods. This isn't going to... Like, I'm sorry, but I... this. You need to choose. You need to choose Save On or you need to choose me. Like, no, that's fucking idiotic. And I understand it's supposed to be fun. Like, it's a car... It's no real person. But the thing is, up to the point, every once in a while, we, we, we are reminded that the people in the show are fucking stupid. That, yeah. that's what i mean and bobby's like you lied to dad mom and she's like no i just lied to one of my senses i have the other four anyway and i'm like wow huh, okay <laughs> and then he's like oh thank god and he goes and he picks up the i don't even know if he doused the flames he goes no, and he picks did up not the entire <laughs> um the entire uh little little grill puts it in a garbage can, takes the lid, puts it on the top. And he's like, oh, thank God. Well, I'm going to go and like bring this to the, the dump right now. <laughs> what a fuck? <laughs> so fucking. Yeah. Mad, Mom. <laughs> Anyways, um, there's some small amount of justice because Lenore shows up late and she's like, oh, whose party is it? And he's like, oh, it's it's my birthday. And she's like, oh, hey, I forgot about it. Oh, ha- happy birthday. I didn't get you anything. And she just goes off to drink. 
and they flirt a little bit and she sits on his lap knowing that she like beat like another woman um and he's like he's like i broke up with governor richards for you and she's like wow you broke up with governor richards to be with me that's kind of like i broke up with governor richards well, she's you're an narcissist. Me. and she's like oh i'm not really the marriage type sweetheart but and, we're already uh, married and she's like, oh, actually, I forged your signature. How the, the divorce, divorce papers. <laughs> and he, he's such a little bitch. And we were reminded he's a pushover when it comes to women. Because she's like, oh, I printed out your, I did your first name in cursive and your last name printed in all caps, just like, like you did. And she's like, he's like, you always knew me so well. I hate she this just guy. Said, I, I hate them both. And I'm like, grow up fucking spine dude and governor richard shows up and she's all like oh i just wanted to wish you a, a happy birthday um blah 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 and um he realizes that he's getting treated badly by lenore governor richards is a fine woman and he does not deserve her N- no there there we, <laughs> we fucking said look how vested we are in this character that's only a in this one episode right <laughs> she is god damn it and she she doesn't need to show up she doesn't need to be this nice to him but she shows up and seeing that lenore's a bitch like a, just a fucking wretched trashy bitch um and she's like hey um um can you give me some directions uh to like whatever conference like she's going to and he's all like Oh yeah, sure. And she's like, "Oh, why don't you get in and tell my driver?" And I, I like this power move. This kind of like, "Hey, bitch, by the way," um, and he he does get in, and he's like, "Oh, go left, and then you lift the chain, and then you take a shortcut." And she doesn't actually like care. Yeah. And um, she starts bitching at him and going crazy, showing her real colors, Lenore. Get out of here right now. You're not allowed to see your ex. What the fuck? You just told me that uh, we were getting married, which she just said that they weren't. But yes. she's saying that in front of Governor Richards. And um, she encourages him to do something or something like that. And uh, she pushes like the window down and he's he's moaning her, <laughs> which I, I found like actually like pretty funny. And she gets super pissed and like runs off. And he's all like, oh, I don't suppose that like we're back together, are we? And she's like, no, Bill, uh, we're not back together. But um, something like I'm, I'm proud of you. Like the, the, you actually did that for yourself. Oh, uh, <clears throat> there was a bit back like when uh, Bill was on the payphone with Lenore where uh Completely lost my train of thought. Uh, was it at his house or was it at the party? Uh, no, it was when they were at the baseball game. Oh, um, there's a bit where we find out that Governor Richards actually knew that Bill wasn't the one who mooned her. That it was actually Hank. Right. And he was all, she was all like... Um, I respect a man who can uh, take a fall for one of his buddies. Because somebody, I can't remember, it was all like, oh, well, uh, I don't even know what you see. And he's being, an, um, he's being um, not self-deprecating, but like, um, um, uh, my, sorry, my brain's going too. He's being um, like unconfident, <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, he's being unconfident. And um, uh, she's all like, oh, well, I respect a man who takes a fall for uh, like one of their friends, blah blah, and he was like, she he was like, oh, wait, you you knew it was it was me, and it was like, oh, I I always knew she, she had security everywhere, and, right, <laughs> right, uh, and I that's what attracted me to you is that you I respect a man who takes a, a fall for her friends, man, this lady I could see the best in him, and like you had said, it was like you know what, she is too good. Too yeah. good for you, sir. She is Governor Richards is absolutely too good for this dude. Yeah, and uh, well, I, I feel like many men can attest that there are many a trashy woman uh, 
that they keep going back to that may and and trashy men that women keep going back to um or men and women keep going back to that uh fill the role of lenore and uh well, at, at least we end on a good note. He was able to say no to uh, Lenore and give her the old moon. Wasn't enough to keep uh, Governor Richards, though. And, sadly. Uh, sadly, but uh, probably for the best. Yep. And uh, there you have it. We just uh, watched a random episode of The King of the Hill. Um, Christopher Siege, uh, would you tune in ne- next week? I am very torn on that front because mm-hmm. I don't know, honestly. It, like I can't This is a hard one. This is a hard one. I can't definitively say there were things that I did like about the show. I liked the writing. Yeah. But Me I too. didn't but the problem is, is I didn't like most of the characters in the show. I like Governor Richards, <clears throat> but she was a guest star. Uh-huh. And everyone else is else. Everyone else is very stupid. Everyone okay. else is a fucking idiot in this episode. So, or they're um, enabling, <laughs> or they're enabling, like yeah. uh, like Hank's wife. Uh, I did like I how say sweet no. the relationship was, though. I gotta say no, honestly. It's the rug pull for me. Things were going so well; it was actually kind of sweet. And then we, it, it's frustrating to see him ruin that yeah someone like self-sabotage like so badly and in such a like insecure was the word empty-headed manner yeah for for what like so he can bang his ex-wife once i and oh man just so he could just bang the ex-wife again who he's already banged probably like a thousand times in the past who always <laughs> tends to show up and ruin his life and who has uh presumably just been horrendous for him yep uh and so that was frustrating for me me too Do you, like uh, seeing like how it was coming about so the first half i was like oh this is funny they're like secretly eating like charcoal burgers without Hank knowing. Right. And then at the end, like Bill just like sabotaging his own like really sweet relationship. And it's like that whole like, I don't know, like there's a lot of good, but like eh, to it, that whole I don't know is my exact memory of King of the Hill. Where I was like, right, it's. I like the writing. It's good, but like the episodes where there's a win for the characters or the characters do something smart are so few and far between. It's almost frustrating. And I don't know if I can handle that level of like continuous stupidity. (laughs) I also was really bothered by the whole like charcoal barbecue thing. Honestly. (laughs) Well, it's... I mean, ob- like, I, I will say, like, it's almost, like, objective, like, objectively better that, like, stuff cooked on a oh, Well, indeed, and the show barbecue, implies that like, it... Like, like tastes better. It yeah. has more flavor to it. But, like, I actually don't like his family lying to Hank just to make him feel better. Yeah. That I don't know. I don't. I just something about that like really bugs me. And yeah, yeah, the whole thing with um, yeah, with Bill and uh, Governor Richards, like their romance was actually like really sweet, and he like completely throws it away to like in the hopes, like yeah, just, not even it, because he already banged. Yeah, his ex. just in the hopes that he might hook up with his like slutty ex-wife. Like, I don't know. Like, it it was just annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seeing so, characters lose all the time or do stupid things is a hard note to end the episode on. Everybody yeah. loses at the end. So I can appreciate... Except the, Hank's like, ego. 
that the writing in this series is quite smart, but like watching this randomly, I'm like, I was more frustrated than anything at the end. I'm like, I watched it with my partner and she's like, that's just frustrating. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, no, I, no, I, so, okay. So my, my definitive answer is no, I would not tune in next week based on this episode. And again, even though I've seen a lot of this, just based on this one, I can't tune in next week either. Again, just this one was fun to talk about with you. We yeah. both really liked the governor. We thought all the jokes were like funny, but like those frustrating like parts, uh, we 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 can't do. And I can get past the um, the gas, not gaslighting, but the the oh, I'll, I'll get rid of this charcoal right away. Like I can get past that because that's so stupid that it's unbelievable. But like the very believable relationship that bill ruined for me is so frustrating that it's hard for me to say i would tune in in next week right so just given this one no that's a it's a, it's a no from both of us and, and uh, uh well there it is <laughs> <laughs> uh that was episode 83 of the laser comb podcast uh best way to support the show is to go to patreon.com slash laser comb l-a-z-o-r-c-o-m-b where starting at the five dollar tier you get access to a weekly ish uh bonus patreon exclusive podcast called the super laser comb patreon super show you also get access to commentary tracks whole bunch of other goodies including the ability to pick a show for us to review a random episode of whatever on this very podcast so if you want to get in on that go to patreon.com slash laser um follow us on social yeah uh join our discord link in the description as always uh best way to connect with us um i've had weirdly i've had a few people reach out to me on instagram recently oh yeah yeah you you've shared a couple uh messages yeah you've had yeah it's been odd i'm like huh a couple new listeners have uh reached out yeah so you can uh follow me on instagram at christopher siege it's basically the only social media site that i still like have any use for at this point and even even it i'm kind of like teetering on the border of it's connected to threads too but like threads is just kind of like like a a word somehow like includes instagram but is also not as good kind of yeah i don't know i haven't posted on instagram in like five years threads was a uh, hype for a hot minute and the almost, hottest of minutes the hottest of minutes literally like a week yeah blue sky in, was like the bi- biggest ad disappointing uh like what what is it called like uh like edging experiment ever or like ruined ruined o like ever where everyone's like oh man i can't wait to get on that and then you get on it and you're like oh it's just this is more it's like less going on here than threads Cool. Which is saying something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram at Christopher Siege or again, as I mentioned, uh, join the Discord. Link in the description. Uh, we will be back, not next week, because I've got a wackadoo work schedule coming up. Oh, it's wackadoo. It is wackadoo. Uh, but we will be back a week after next with episode 84 of the Lace Gone Podcast, where we're going to be talking about Trailer Park Boys. Oh, yeah. Now, to find out which episode of Trailer Park Boys we're going to watch, um, do you want to include the entire run? Or do you want to just include the original, like, first run? Because the show was off the air for almost a decade. Yeah. I, I'm thinking the... What do you think? I'm thinking the original run. I think the run. original run. Yeah? Yeah. The OG. Yeah, let's let's do the OG. Yeah, we're not going to include um, when Netflix picked it back up. Not that it's not good. Um, we're not going to include the movies or anything like that. Uh, I haven't seen any of the Netflix. 
Um, but uh, we're just going to do the OG run. Okay. okay, so we're hitting uh, screen share and hitting share. So the original run, it looks like, had 55 episodes. So go into the old trusty random number generator. One episode between 1 and 55, and here we go. And where it stops on a rum and coke. <laughs> 53. Okay. Uh, 53, huh? Very late in the series. That is season 7, episode 8. Let liquor do the thinking. Randy and Mr. Leahy get back together with the help of the liquor. <laughs> Randy, try, Randy tries to break off his engagement to Lucy. Meanwhile, the news media is circulating uh, a sketch of the suspect wanted, apparently by the FBI, for stealing the Swazi Express. And it looks a lot like Bubbles. Huh. The Swazi Express, huh? All right. All right. Well, we'll be back next time with that. And until then, I've been the Siege, one of your hosts. And I'm Neo Cal, your other host. Uh, thanks for listening. We will propane you next time. And uh, propane accessories here next time as well. Mm-hmm.